and look at it, and it really doesn't look good. I can't treat it. I have to call home health in, and they now treat mom's skin to you. Okay. Okay. So, and then they'll be charged, the patient or the resident will be charged for that, though. Like, Medicare pays for that. Oh, okay. So, it doesn't cost the resident any money. Medicare will, Medicare, I'm sorry, home health will charge Medicare. And we use a variety of home health agencies. Okay. The first thing you do is you ask the resident or the family member, is there a particular home health agency you would like me to use? If they say no, you pick one. So we pick one that we know is responsive. But if we call them at 10 o'clock in the morning, they'll have somebody out there by 2 o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. And then you can call physical... Wait, wait a minute. And then the billing for that service is done by home health with the resident. We are out of the picture. Oh, okay. Okay. Billing, billing for the service. You know, in other words, billing for the dressing change. We have nothing to do with the billing for that. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, it would be kind of a conflict of interest. Mm-hmm. Okay, and then do you, so you have an on-call doctor? No, no, again, you don't need that in, a, in, a, in an assisted living. Okay. Every, res, every resident has their own PCP. Now, there are several NAs, I'm sorry, PAs that we use a lot, and we would pick up the phone and call the PA or the ARMP, or if we have to, we call the doctor. Um the reason we use a lot of PAs and ARMPs is they will come into the building once a week. Most of the doctors won't. Right. Okay. And, and the regulation is that a doctor only has to sign the physician orders every 180 days. Oh, okay. okay so the docs don't come in a lot. Okay. And so it's is that... Very, the- it's a very different example and I know it's on the board, or at least it was 47 years ago. Before you give DIG, what do you do? Check the apical heart rate, right? Correct. Correct. Mm. Correct. We don't do that in assisted living. Unless the doctor specifically orders it. And the reason we don't do it is if the person was living at home, they would never take their apical pulse. That's they true. Would not take, they wouldn't take their radial pulse. So essentially, we have it. We were in an apartment building. It just happens to have nurses in it. But remember, we don't need a nurse in the building. Mm. We need a nurse to be on the by phone. So unless the doctor specifically says, take the pulse before giving the dish, right? And old if we never take a pulse, we mm. never take a blood pressure before we give a Norvab or any kind of um, antihypertensive. Unless the doctor specifically writes it as an order. Oh, because okay. My mother was on Indurol and Norvac for 40 years. She never took a pulse. She never took a blood pressure. She oh. wouldn't have known how to do either. Yeah, wow. <laughs> and 99% of the people who are at home who are on ditch do not take their pulse. Okay. Okay. Okay, so how about, is that the same, like, for memory care? Do they have, like, the same rules, generally speaking? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Very good. Okay, so. Wait a minute, wait a minute. The only difference is PRNs are frowned upon in memory care because it's felt that most people in memory care do not have enough cognizant ability to say, I have a headache. Can I have a Tylenol? So, in memory here, um, and see, I'm a certified Alzheimer's trainer, so one of the things I teach the classes are that 90% of communication is nonverbal. So you have to become what I call a behavior detective. If I put my hand up to my head and I start rubbing my head, you know, my forehead, there's probably a good chance that I have a headache. Right. You have to watch their face to see if when they're eating, are they grimacing? I might have a toothache. So that's when you'd call the PCP to say she needs to go to a dentist. That's when you'd give a PRN Tylenol if you saw me rubbing my forehead. Um, okay. Okay. All right. Neat, okay. So the next one is, uh, 
we're almost done. It's um, projected needs. Oh, wait, no, we just talked about the projected needs of the agency. Oh, was there anything else, like, I don't need-wise for the agency that they need? I mean, I don't know if exactly how the question is Yeah, I know. I mean, the, agency, they, the agencies are basically at our mercy. You know, we will call whoever is the most responsive to our phone calls. Now, we're, we are visited by agencies all the time trying to recruit us. You know, they bring in cookies, candy, pens, paper. Um, the truth is we'll try a new agency, a new home health agency, but if they don't, you know, if we call them and they don't send somebody right away, then we'll go to somebody who we know will. Okay, very, okay, now I understand. Okay, so then the last one is utilization of services by people in the community. Okay, so... Any resident can use any service they want. We like if they, in other words, if they're going out to the dentist, we like to know they're going so that we can watch for them when they come back to see if they had a tooth pulled or they had their teeth cleaned. You know, some people don't have a high tolerance for dentists. Mm -hmm. so they're going to be in a lot of pain. I mean, I, one of my closest friends, and we used the same dentist, and he, he had been my dentist for 20 years before Penny started to use them. And they knew that Penny was terrified of dentists Aww. and dental hygienists, even though Jerry used a good friend of ours as his dental hygienist. So what they would do with my friend Penny is, and Penny didn't work, when they mm -hmm. had an appointment available for her to have her teeth cleaned, they call her that morning and say, Penny, They'd call her at 9 o'clock in the morning and they'd say, Penny, you do here at 10 o'clock to have your teeth cleaned. Uh -huh. Because they knew they knew that she would never make an appointment and they knew that if she didn't make an appointment, she would be so frightened that she usually canceled it. So they finally worked out this system. We had Nancy, Nancy, who was our friend, who was a dental hygienist, would call Penny and say, Penny, I'm expecting you at 10 o'clock this morning for me to clean your teeth. So, Penny... We like to know if somebody's going to their PCP or their cardiologist or the dentist so we can watch for when they come back. Do they put them on a new prescription? Um, Did they do a procedure that they might be in pain, for, pain with? Um, but it's resident choice. They can see anybody they want. They can come and go as they please. All we ask is that they sign out when they leave the building and they sign back in when they come in. And that's in case, God forbid, we have a fire. We don't go back in the building looking for them. Right. And they're right at the doctors. So, um, they can, we really have nothing to do in a way with the services they use. It's their choice. Now, if they need a cardiologist, we can give them names of a cardiologist, but we can't make recommendations because then it's, it looks like we're scaring them to a certain way and we're going to get a kickback. Which we don't. Okay. 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 So it's really up to them. Same thing if a family member says, I'm moving my mother up from, I'm moving her down from Massachusetts and she doesn't have a doctor. Can you recommend somebody? We don't recommend just one person. We'll give them a name of three different docs. Right. Okay. okay. Because otherwise it looks like we might be getting a kickback. If we only recommend one, right, right, okay. So, you know, we have to you have to be very careful that everything's on the up and up. Okay. Well, thank you so much for your help. Um, oh, you're welcome. Trying... If you think of another question, or if as you're writing the report, you say, "Oh, I should have asked her this," just call me. Oh, okay. That whether it's today or tomorrow. I am on call 24-7. The phone is never turned off. As a rule, I don't go to bed until about 1 a.m. Oh, wow. Um, the only thing I ask is that you wait until 7 a.m. to call me. I am up between 5.30 and quarter of 6 every morning, but you got to give me time to have my first cup of tea and a couple of cigarettes. Okay. So my is meant to, you know, by 7 o'clock, I'm able to talk and make sense. All right, so, Andy. Okay. Well, thank you so much again for all your help, and I'll definitely uh, keep your number and the projects do.
it's due Tuesday, so we'll be uh, doing it then. But thank you again, and you have a great night. Okay, Andy, thank you. Oh, thank you so much. Me too. <laughs>